Alright, hello guys, how's it going in today's video? We're finally going to be talking about the fall of 2021. You guys have been asking for this for like at least a month, maybe even two months. I've been getting so many comments requesting this one. And finally, we're going to be talking about it. It's not quite a forecast, but I am going to be talking a lot about what my forecast could look like. <laughs> Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know how do you expect this upcoming fall to go? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. In today's video, we're going to be primarily using our analogs, actually, our analog years for the upcoming fall of 2021. So our biggest thing is actually going to be second year La Ninas because last year we had a La Nina and we expect to have a La Nina again this upcoming end of this year into next winter. So that will be our second year La Nina. So I tried to find as many of those as I possibly could. And here's the first of which, 1955. You have to go pretty far back for this one. And we can see that there was a lot of warmth there in the southwest. There was some cooler air up there in the northwest, but mostly cooler in the eastern half of the country. Uh, now, it's actually usually considered that second-year La Ninas have colder falls and winters than first-year La Ninas because it is pretty common for them to happen back-to-back. -back. So you have the first one, the second one in a row. And when I say a second-year La Nina, that's what I mean, a second La Nina in a row. So, like, for instance, 2020 to 2021 was a La Nina. This second one is going to be 2021 to 2022, which will be our second-year La Nina. So this was a second year one because 1954 also had a La Nina. Now here is our second example, 1974. So this is our second year La Nina. So there was one in 1973 as well. Uh, but 1974 here, you could see that cold air just poured into the eastern two-thirds of the country here. And there was hardly any warmth actually. 1970s were known to be some of the coldest times in recent history for the United States. Uh, some of those winters were the most potent of all time. So this isn't very surprising to see this be probably the coldest example that we're going to show today. I'll take it with a grain of salt because these, you know, from 1970 to 1980, there is a lot of cold falls and a lot of cold winters in there. Some of the coldest winters of all time are actually in there as well. So it was just an anomaly in itself. Now, it's clear that there was a positive PNA pattern in place this winter because of that warmer air just set up over of Western Canada and Western United States that probably just helped that colder air pour into the eastern half of the country. Now our next example and final one is going to be 2008 and this is the most recent one we have uh, that's a really good example and, and this one had mostly warmth actually in the United States and a lot of it in the west and the northern United States. We did have some cooler air down there for the southeast in the south central United States uh, but not a ton of cold compared to the warmth that we have out there in the West. So this is our warmest example. And when you put all three together, this is the look. Mostly colder in the eastern half of the country and mostly warmer in the western half of the country. Very, very interesting here. September to November of 2008, 1974, and 1955. All, of three, all three of those are second year La Nina Falls. So they're really good analogs to be using in this example. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the precipitation in the same fashion. We're going to look at 1955, 1974, and 2008 once again for precipitation, and then we're going to put all three together. Then we're finally going to take a look at what the CFS model has to say and also what the National, well, actually the Climate Prediction Center has to say about this upcoming fall as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at the precipitation for 1955. And as you can see, it was mostly drier uh, for most of the United States. And actually, a little bit of a spoiler alert here, this is actually the most wet fall that we had out of all three of these that I'm going to show. So overall, these second-year La Ninas bring very dry falls, actually, from what I'm seeing. And that's not surprising. Usually, La Ninas are a little bit drier and El Ninos are a little bit more wet for sure. They usually have more of that precipitation pouring in through our southern jet into California, down through the southern United States. In a La Nina, you just don't have that in the same way. That's why they tend to be a little bit more dry. Now, in this fall, I'm sure there was plenty of nor'easters considering we had a lot of that precipitation there for the Gulf states and then all the way up the east coast, which is weird for a La Nina. Usually, El Ninos are the ones that have nor'easters the most. Let's take a look at 1974, and as you can see, a lot of dry air there for, or actually a lot of, I've been talking about the tropics so much, a lot of dryness in general here for the eastern half of the country. 
some above average precipitation there for Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma, but that's about it. Everywhere else, more dry. 2008 finally, and here we are taking a look at the more dry conditions for the eastern half of the country again, and then the northwest again. So really, you could tell that these are more dry than normal. And when we look at all three combined, it's very clear that that is the case. 1955, 1974, and 2008 put together, and look at that, just more dry than normal for almost all of the United States. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that CFS model. And here we are taking a look at September. It has colder than normal conditions for the southeast. Everywhere else is warmer than normal. But that kind of comes to an end because for October, it's mostly warmer than normal for the entire month. And then also in November, it's even warmer for the entire month. Take this with a grain of salt because this model does change like literally daily. So we're going to see this change probably about 40 times before we even reach September. Uh, and I don't expect it to stick with this. And even if it does, it, it it's not always right. So we're going to have to take that with a grain of salt. The only good thing about a warm fall would be that usually warm falls help the Arctic basically build up more ice and more snowpack, which usually means a colder winter is on the way. Usually you don't see a colder fall and a colder than normal winter together. I know that's what most people always want, but that is just very, very rare actually. Uh, it's not very common whatsoever. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the precipitation forecast here according to this model. And then we're going to just take a look at what the Climate Prediction Center has to say real quickly. Now here is the precipitation forecast for September. And as you can see, it looks a little bit different than what our uh, analogs showed because we see some above average precipitation for the New England states, the South Central and the Northwest with more dry for the Southeast there. Uh, definitely not what the analogs were showing at all. And maybe this model doesn't even really see a stronger La Nina setting up, but it has more precipitation for the Northwest again in October and for the Central Eastern United States. And then same story for November. Very odd here because this is just definitely in complete disagreement with our analogs to say the least. Even having above average precipitation, even widespread anywhere is a little bit overkill con considering what our analogs showed. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But as you can see, this is all three months put together. And as you can see, Northwest and the South Central United States having above average precipitation and hardly anywhere having below average precipitation. Very, very surprising there. What's not surprising is kind of the coastal regions of the Gulf states, most of the Gulf states and the southeast having below average precipitation. There will be a lack of nor'easters considering we're likely going to have a La Nina condition set up. Typically that leads to nearly no nor'easters. That's usually just reserved for El Nino years, which likely next year we will be entering into El Nino year because you don't usually see three La Ninas in a row. And from what I just looked at because I had to build all those analogs. It's only happened once, I believe, three La Nina years in a row. So that leaves us at a point where an El Nino is extremely likely next season, uh, if not an, a neutral Enso, but three years in a row for a La Nina would be extremely rare, and it would be only the second time from what I just saw. Maybe it would be the third time at most. Now here's what the Climate Prediction Center has to say about the temperatures, and it just says above average everywhere. Above average temperatures everywhere. Uh, not really surprising to see this. This is very common for them to show this. The good news for them is they will probably be about 50% right with this because probably 50% of the United States will see above average temperatures. The bad news is probably they will be 50% wrong as well because probably 50% of the United States will see below average temperatures. Don't really get the mindset here, but they do this very, very often in their outlooks. The only one where they ever really show below average temperatures is in the one month forecast because they have to basically uh, agree with the information coming in by that point. So that's when they kind of come back down to a very realistic outlook. Precipitation. Don't know if I agree with the above average precipitation for the mid-Atlantic and southeast states. Very, very odd to see that there. That's like such a random place to put it. I do agree with some drier conditions for the southwest and for a lot of the central United States. I would just carry that all the way to the East Coast, though. Uh, the only area that would be kind of likely, there's two areas, actually, that would be kind of likely to have above-average precipitation. It would be, for me, the Northwest, and then also the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, potentially, would be the two areas I'm eyeballing. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 3 out of 6. There was obviously a lot of contradicting factors coming in today. The analogs looked a lot different than the models. 
The models looked a lot different than what the Climate Prediction Center was showing. So really, that's why I haven't made a forecast yet, if you haven't been able to notice, because which, which information do I go with in the forecast? I'm going to wait a little bit because of that information. That's why we're at a 3 out of 6 as well. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think we will see our strongest hurricane this upcoming season? And Cloud Watcher said, I think our strongest storm will be September like usual. I think that will likely be the case. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bambanek, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Lerda the Panda, Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Bainlin, Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below because those two things help my channel out so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.